some of the sexy applications for uh, silica fume concrete. The, uh, and this is under construction right now. This is actually an artist rendition of the Hoover Dam and a bridge that they're building below the Hoover Dam. I don't know if anybody's ever taken a tour. Anybody taken a tour of the Hoover Dam Out, outside Vegas? There you go. This, uh, this, this road comes down State Route 92 and weaves its way back up this side. It uh, goes right across the top of the dam. And the visitor center's over here and the parking garage is here and people were on this highway and the tour lets out here and people were on this highway. There's 18 wheelers that cross this. It's like, it's like driving 18 wheelers through recess in a schoolyard. I mean, there's people all over this bridge all day long taking a tour and they've got to snake down this canyon and across it and back up the other side at about 15 mile an hour. Plus now the 9-11 uh, terrorist threat the idea is to get all that, tra all that traffic off the bridge, not just for safety reasons, but for terrorist reasons. This bridge has been designed for 30 years uh, after 9-11. It's being built real quick. The columns in that bridge, the, uh, another artist's rendition, the, uh, the box beam here and the, and the uh, concrete going up to the, this is going to be a, a steel bridge here with asphalt decking, but all of this concrete here is all silica fume concrete, all 10,000 PSI, actually 12,000 PSI uh, silica fume concrete. There's another artist rendition of it. They've gone to great lengths of, because of where it is and it's going to be photographed quite a bit to, uh, to try and make it blend <laughs> with the uh, surroundings as much as they could. That's probably over-exaggerated. The website here is pretty cool. You can actually drive across this bridge on the website, what the surrounding is going to look like. You know, it's a, a, a 3D model of what the bridge driving across will look like. I need to start the other tape, if we may. Questions? Anything? Technology Company presents the story of MSAC microsilica additives and the concrete used to repair the Kinsu Dam's spilling basin. This ultra-high strength flowing concrete was used to repair the stilling basin at the Kinsu Dam here in the Allegheny Valley in northern Pennsylvania in October and November 1983. I'm Mark Luther. I'm a project engineer for Elborg Technology Company. We're working on this uh, project. It's a uh, repair of a stilling basin of a Kinsua Dam. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is the federal agency responsible for maintaining the nation's waterways. The Kinsu Dam and its stilling basin is one of its responsibilities. A stilling basin is exactly what its name implies. It stills the water that flows out of a dam before it reaches the main channel of a river or other body of water. If there were no stilling basin, the energy from the high velocity water would simply gouge out great holes in the riverbed and its banks and possibly endanger the stability of the dam. At Kinsu, the stilling basin is a large area, about 204 feet wide by 180 feet long, with five foot thick slabs of concrete. It was originally placed in operation in 1966 and was made of good quality concrete with six inch sized aggregates. By 1973, the combination of high velocity water flow and the presence of debris in the basin had eroded the concrete surface and caused general erosion with holes as much as three feet deep. That same year, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers led a contract to repair the entire slab with a one-foot minimum overlay of low-slump steel fiber reinforced concrete, the very best concrete then known for this type of repair work. Nine years later, in 1982, underwater inspections by divers showed that in some places, the one-foot overlay of steel fiber reinforced concrete had been worn away, and as much as two feet of the original slab was also gone. And then over here you see the worst damage. This is where the greatest force from the upper sluice gate, sluice gate number two, uh, occurs. This is where the water impacts and swirls around and the energy is killed. 
And as you can see, it's really done a number on the concrete here. Some of these holes are two and a half, three feet deep, if not more than that. Well, as you can see, the fellow with the Philadelphia rod there, uh, I don't know if you can see how deep he is there, but I would say where he's standing right there is over two feet deep right now. And what they're doing is taking elevations using that rod and the level behind us there to determine where the level of this concrete is now so they can uh, determine what they need to do. In order to more effectively repair the Kinsu Dam stilling basin, the Corps of Engineers initiated extensive abrasion erosion testing at its waterways experiment station in Vicksburg, Mississippi. It wanted to determine which materials are able to stand up to high velocity water, often containing rocks and boulders from the riverbed. Lab tests of concrete produced with MSAC microsilica additives found it to have an abrasion erosion resistance suited for the Kinsu repairs. Through the use of MSAC microsilica additives, it was possible to obtain a strength and denseness that made concrete far more resistant to abrasion than any concrete produced in the United States before. It has long been known that the strength of concrete will increase dramatically if we were able to fill its pores with a cementitious binder. Concrete with MSAC additives achieves its extreme resistance to abrasion through its ultra-high strength and virtual impermeability. With MSAC additive, it is possible to create these properties and still maintain a flowing and self-leveling concrete. But first, the Corps of Engineers required field tests at its Neville Island facility in Pittsburgh, using a ready-mix concrete plant operation to prove this concrete could be produced and placed satisfactorily under normal day-to-day -day working conditions. Three different concrete mixes with three different blends of MSAC additives were batched and shipped from a transit mix plant in the Pittsburgh area. The concrete was rapidly placed and finished. Slumps were as high as 10 inches, giving a flowing consistency for easy handling and placement. Membrane curing compound was applied immediately after the final finishing operation. At Neville Island, concrete containing MSAC additives tested over 10,000 pounds per square inch at seven days and over 17,000 pounds per square inch at 90 days. In its specification for the Kinsu Dam Stilling Basin Rehabilitation, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers required the concrete to attain compressive strength of 10,000 PSI at 7 days and 12,500 PSI at 28 days. Slump was required to be from 7 to 10 inches. The contractor is Casey Company of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The concrete was produced by Harmon Brothers Ready Mix Concrete Company in Warren, Pennsylvania. I can't think of anywhere else in the United States today where they're pumping 10-inch concrete and getting 16,000 PSI unconfined compression test results in uh, 28 days. That's what we're doing here. That's one sample we have received. The average is closer to 13,000 PSI in 28 days. But you have to keep in mind, this is flowing concrete. Typically, it's a 10-inch slump. This is Harmon Brothers concrete plant where the 2,000 cubic yards of uh, microsilica concrete will be made for the dam. This uh, site is about eight miles from the dam. Behind me is the plant where the concrete will be made. One of the advantages of MSAC concrete is you can make it in an ordinary concrete plant, which this is. Uh, no special modifications were made to this plant to enable us to make a very high strength concrete. Here is Alborg's mobile dispensing unit, used for batching MSAC into the truck mixer preloaded with concrete. The MSAC and the concrete were mixed in the truck before the truck left for the dam. The concrete will discharge into the remix hopper of the concrete pumping machine. concrete is transported down to the formwork where the concrete is placed into the slabs and there it is put in place. The 
this is just one way to transport concrete, they had thought about using buckets. They decided on this job to go with the pump because they get better control and it goes a little faster. Our particular concrete seems to pump very well. Where the remix hopper is, samples are taken from the concrete and these samples are tested to make sure the concrete has the proper consistency. its ability to flow and to level itself after eight miles of trucking from the ready mix station. A curing compound is put on to seal the water into the concrete so we get efficient hydration. After the concrete has been put in place, the basin will again be filled with water. And we expect our materials to last twice as long as anything that has been used so far. That, uh, that dam, if you follow the timeline for the structure, it was uh, built in 66. It lasted for six years. And then they put steel fiber reinforced concrete in for repair. The steel fiber reinforced concrete then lasted nine years, up until 1982. In 1983, they went down and did this repair in 1983. The divers have gone down. They used to go down pretty regularly, uh, but they've even stopped going down now. They're up to 23 years now. They expected, you heard them say, they expected that for it to last twice as long. They were hoping to get 10 years, 20 years out of it, and they're already up to 23, uh, and they don't even go down and look at it anymore. It's just performing that well. What they found is the mechanism for failure in, in most abrasion erosion, or in most abrasion, is that even, even with wheel traffic is what happens is the weak link of the concrete breaks down first. And normally the weak link of the concrete is the mortar, is the glue, is the, is the cement part that, that holds everything in place. And after you lost enough of that, that uh, bond, then the aggregate comes free. And the aggregate comes free and it gets ground in and more stuff loose. So it's really the loss of the weak link first that, that causes the, uh, the abrasion erosion because then everything happens after that. The idea of making uh, uh, the mortar stronger is to make it so that there is no weak link. Make the mortar as strong as the aggregate so that everything abrades at the same rate. You see a lot of industrial floors that uh, in the past they used to place a normal concrete and the contractor would come out and throw a shake. They call it a shake. You throw a, a hard ar aggregate on the floor. Sometimes they were actually iron aggregates and actually try and work that into the concrete surface for more abrasion resistant surface. And that's all well and good. You put a really abrasive resistant aggregate in 4,000 PSI mortar. <laughs> and the mortar breaks down first. The aggregate comes free. You've got, you, know, you haven't changed the weak link. You've made your, your, your better material better, but you haven't changed the weak link, and that's what fails first. And that's what the Corps of Engineers and the Bureau and Rec and everything they do now on locks and dams. Uh, Paducah, Kentucky has a, uh, a lock and dam, a, a super lock that they're putting in down there now. It's a six year construction project. Uh, all the underwater concrete will be uh, silica fume concrete because you only want to do it once. You don't want to come back in 20 years and do any repairs. You want to do it one time and walk away from it. <laughs> 